coming back from Hajj, wearing the hijab, I think I kind of, uh, it kind of shocked everybody. I didn't tell anybody about it. I was kind of secretive. Um, but Alhamdulillah, everyone was positive. They accepted me. Um, they, they respected my decision. And I'm glad that, that Alhamdulillah, Malaysia is a Muslim country. So having this acceptance is easy. You know, because a lot of people here wear the hijab. So there was a lot of things that I had to kind of just let go. You know, things that I've just done pretty much my whole entire life. Uh, like, you know, my love, my love for performing, my love for music. It actually happened to me through um, a space of time. Uh, I had to actually sacrifice a few of my projects that I wanted to do, um, which was one of them, which was my uh, Around the World concert DVD. I actually planned to release that, sell it, da da da, you know. And coming back, I was like, hmm. Maybe it's a better idea I don't Because now My thinking is I gotta do things I have to do everything For the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Is that gonna make him happy? Or is that gonna upset him? So I was thinking Okay well ATW Not in hijab Dancing on stage Probably not Right So that's one I had to do I And then you know I love dancing You know like dancing was like My number one passion Since I was a kid you know, dancing, break dancing, whatever. So that's another thing that I had to stop. You know, being on stage, just dancing, whatever. So now I, you know, do it at home. That's fine. In <laughs> the privacy of our own space. So that's that's okay. That's cool. So these sacrifices that I make, inshallah, you know, Allah loves loves us even more for sacrificing something for Him. You know. So that's what I always keep telling myself. Like it's okay, Nina. Allah loves you. You know, um, it, this is not going to make him happy, so do something else. So, so that's why I have this new Muslimah business and all that. So, inshallah, you know, that, that goes well. So, yeah. Being born a Muslim, I knew Islam as a set of do's and don'ts. I have to admit that a lot of times I just followed the religion without really embracing it in my heart. I was disconnected. Yasmin talks to us about the importance of understanding the main purpose of this journey. Before you take any kind of action, before you take a journey, before you struggle for something, you need to understand why you're doing it, right? You have to understand what's the importance of this journey. So to begin with, we have to talk about the importance of the heart in order to understand the importance of reclaiming it, the importance of purifying it and keeping it sound and keeping it alive. Now there's a hadith that many of us have learned growing up. And it's a hadith about haram and halal. And in the hadith, the Prophet ﷺ tells us that the haram and the halal are clear. And that between them are things called mutashabihat, which are the doubtful matters, right? So the, the hadith is teaching us that Allah has an area called haram, which is an area that we don't want to enter. But if we don't want to enter, we shouldn't even come close. And that area outside of the haram is called mutashabihat. Those are the doubtful matters. And the safest advice is to stay away from the doubtful matters to protect yourself from falling into the haram. All right, the hadith is clear. Now here's what's very interesting, is that hadith, whenever we're taught this hadith, typically, at least for myself, growing up, it's like, um, it ends there, right? It's a discussion about haram and halal. It's a discussion about rules, but it ends there. It's, it's, it's basically kind of encapsulates the way, the, the, the limited way in which we have taught Islam for too long, which is a code of do's and don'ts, a code of haram and halal, a, a, just a code of a list of things you do and a list of things you don't do, without the, 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 the heart, without the, 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 the soul of those actions, without the understanding and the depth of those actions. Where's the motivation? 
So you tell me that this is haram, and you tell me this is halal, and you tell me these are the mutashabihat. Where does the fuel come from to stay away from the haram and the doubtful matters? You know, subhanAllah, what I found out recently, I learned, is that the hadith doesn't end there. The hadith continues, and continues and says, وَإِنَّ فِي الْجَسَدِ مُضْغَ Indeed, and indeed in the body there is a lump of flesh. إِذَا صَلُحَتْ صَلَحَ الْجَسَدُ كُلُّ If it is set right, then the entire body is set right. وَإِذَا فَسَدَتْ فَسَدَ الْجَسَدُ كُلُّ And if it is corrupted, the entire body is corrupted. أَلَا وَهِيَ الْقَلْبِ Indeed it is the heart. Now what does that have to do with the first part? We begin the hadith with talking about haram and halal. And then he ends, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the hadith with talking about the master of the body. He says that if you fix this, then the whole body will be fixed. So if you work on this, then it will become easier for us to stay away from the haram and the doubtful matters. The Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, has given us an entire complete vision of how to live. He does not just give us one half, which is this is haram, and this is halal. But we, for some reason, this is how we teach. And we grow up learning in this way. It's about rules. It's just rules. But what's interesting about that, is when you look at the seerah of the Prophet ﷺ, and the way in which he raised and taught his companions, you find something very interesting. The rules in the Qur'an, the rules that, that start, you know, we, we find in the Qur'an there's a section, you know, there's parts, there's ayat that are about rules. Haram, halal, rules of inheritance, rules of marriage, rules of divorce, right? You know when those were revealed? In Medina, most of them. In Medina is when the rules came. So the, the, what was happening at the beginning? What was happening at the beginning is it was not about rules at that point. It was not about the specifics of haram and halal. It was about building the connection with Allah in the heart. That's why you'll find that the, that the, the verses that were Mecki, the Mecki verses, the verses revealed in Mecca, are the verses that are mostly about the hereafter, about the reality of this life and the next, about the relationship with Allah, about hope and fear and love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The first step that we will uh, inshallah cover <coughs> is actually what we call a break up into the pre-salah steps. And that is to remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in between our prayers or outside of our prayers. Living in a society, when we go out, we're bombarded constantly with different kinds of entertainment. Okay? Sports, music, movies, TV, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. So at least even if we're not going to give up these things, what we need to understand is I have to at least reduce my intake of these things and increase my intake of the positive things or the remembrance of Allah, whether that's Quran or whatever that may be. The second step, to prepare your mind and your heart for the Salah. Before the Salah, I just sit down just in silence and I think about the fact that whatever else is going on in my mind, this project that I need to do, this assignment for work, this other task, whatever is going on, right now it's not important. <laughs> Number three would also be I guess pre-salah, <coughs> but it would be to eliminate distractions. Sometimes what happens is, oh, we need, really need to use the restroom and we need to pray, but what would we do? We say, ah, oh, you know, uh, I have wudu. And I just, you know, I'm, let me do it and I'll go and I'll, I'll use the bathroom right after. We need to make sure that, you know, we have gas or whether it's something we need to use the, the restroom, that we do that first. Alright, so the next step is to seek refuge with Allah from shaitan. Before the prayer, we want to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, even to help us, right? That of course we're doing this for His sake, to accept it from us, but also to help us block all those things out to help us stay focused. The other one that is as well now pre-salah is, this might seem very simple, but it's essential. And that is, know the meaning of what we're saying in our prayer. But whether you speak a word of Arabic or not, 
it is essential that we at least learn the meaning of what we are saying in our salah. I wouldn't, I, you know, I wouldn't have imagined me doing this now, like back then. Like, um, you know, being studious, being a student again, student of knowledge, student, student of Islam. Now, life has uh, taken a big change. I, I go for Mangaji class twice a week. I, I, I've enrolled in a few Islamic courses as well. So going out into a classroom environment uh, weekly really does help me kind of maintain that consistency in learning and also being in a company of teachers and people who are also learning as well. So I feel that every time I surround myself with, with uh, these people or even places like that, it, I feel a bit more stronger with, with my iman, with my deen, somehow or other. I, I don't know, I don't know how. Like, and I love going for Mangaji now. I feel so, I feel so good after I read part of the Quran. You know, um, it's something that it's like a, it's like self-help. You know, every time you read the Quran, I, I, that's what I feel. So that's why I also decided to take um, a diploma course in Islamic studies. Uh, which happens on the weekend as well. So inshallah, my diploma studies, uh, my mengaji, and then, you know, with that together, really get that, like, going. And inshallah, in the future, I don't know when, I'd love to learn how to speak Arabic. So then, that's like, that's just like a long-term studying plan for myself until the day I die. One of the functions of the heart, number one, is it acts as the master of the body. It's the captain of the ship. It's the one that is in charge and it is what leads, it affects the rest of the body and the rest of our actions. The second function of the heart, Allah tells us in the Quran, لَهُمْ قُلُوبٌ لَا يَفْقَهُونَ بِهَا لَهُمْ قُلُوبٌ لَا يَفْقَهُونَ بِهَا now that's an interesting statement because it means they have hearts that they do not reason with. Or in other words, they have hearts that they do not understand with. So this means that your reasoning and your understanding is through the heart, is through the lens of the heart. Whatever is the condition of the heart is how you understand the world. It isn't, don't think it's, it's just going in the mind and it's just being processed by the mind, but it is being processed through the heart. So for example, a person who, perhaps a person who has a problem with honesty, has a problem, struggles with being honest, will see the world as everybody's lying, everybody's being dishonest. It affects how you see the world because this is something you struggle with. If you're a person, if you're a person who doesn't always maybe have good intentions, you assume others don't have good intention. And vice versa too. You'll find some people and they just, you know, they always give others the benefit of the doubt. Always assuming best intentions from others. And that's a reflection of the heart. When you yourself are, have a clean heart, you assume others do as well. And that's how you, inter that's how you interpret the world. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the Qur'an that it is not the eyes that become blind, but it is the heart inside the chest. Therefore, there could be people who see with the eyes, and yet they are blind. And others who could be blind in the eyes, and they actually see. The reason for this is true sight, true basira, is the sight of the heart. It's not the sight of the eyes. Allah says that, that, that it's not the eyes that become blind. It is the heart inside the chest that becomes blind. So that's why I can be looking at something. Two people could be looking at the exact same thing and see it completely differently. And that's because the heart is the lens. It's not the eyes. Um, example is how we look at things that happen in our lives. Okay, the same scenario to one person looks like a calamity. The same one to another person looks like a blessing. And you know why that is? It's how they view it. It's how it is viewed by the heart. The one whose heart 
is full of love of dunya. It's full of hubb dunya. It's going to interpret things based on dunya. Okay? So for example, money. A person who wins a million dollars, did they just get something good? Well, the question is, depends on which criteria you use. If you use the criteria of dunya, have they gotten something good? Yes, they won a million dollars. Good thing. But what if that money brought them away from Allah? If you're looking at the dunya as your criteria, then it's good to get money and it's bad to lose money. Correct? Okay. But if you have a different type of lens, the criteria is not about gaining or losing dunya. It is about what? It is about nearness or or distance from Allah. Now, when we're starting the prayer, here's the, the key issues that we want to focus on. The Prophet ﷺ, he said that when any of you stands to pray, let them realize who it is that they are speaking to and let them pay attention to how they speak to him. So number seven, I believe. Take your time. What do I mean by this? It's mentioned that the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam he would pause at the end of every ayah and he would reflect upon the meanings of it. And it's mentioned in some other narrations that in fact he would even sometimes respond or say something, but he would reflect upon it. Let's say it's Zohar time, one o'clock. What does Shaitan do? He comes up. Then you got a lot of time. So what do we do? We put it off. Or we put it off. We put it off. Ah, we still got time. And what happens eventually? We're like, look at our thing, oh snap, it's like, you know, 10 minutes left. So I rush and I make wudu, and what happens? I approach my prayer now in a very rushed state. I'm not at ease. I'm now doing it just to get it over and done with. So just making that change will find a big help in your khushul. Because now, when you're going to pray even and you're standing in it, you're more at ease internally. The, the next thing that we would say is <laughs> remembering death. Because the Prophet ﷺ said, Remember death in your prayer. For the one who remembers death while they are praying is surely or is bound to focus in it and to pray the prayer of the one who thinks they will never get to pray again. The last one that I wanted to mention in this regard is the post salah thing, which is stay in our place of prayer and check our hearts. But the Prophet says, that so long as someone stays in their place of prayer and does not break their wudu that the angels come and they say and they ask Allah they actually make dua for you and us, they make dua for us and they say Oh Allah have mercy on him or her One activity that is fun to do in Queenstown Skyline is to ride on luge Queenstown is a really fun place for the whole family. I definitely come back with my family in the future, inshallah. Now we're going to do a view uh, right down the hill. Uh, so I think that's much safer. <laughs> Looking forward to that. We are here now uh, at the first time riders uh, name. <laughs> it's I think a good idea that I go for the first time rider because uh, I've never been on this before. Apparently, um, how you ride it is supposed to put you know everything uh, within the ride, your legs and your feet, and to move forward you just push forward and go left and right to turn and to break you pull back. So wish me luck.
that was such a cool experience. I think uh, it's pretty easy to maneuver and uh, actually it's pretty fun to race too. So Alhamdulillah, uh, inshallah we'll come back again. It is also important to know about the diseases of the heart in order for us to have a pure heart and fill it with the love of Allah. Scholars of the heart talk about different poisons of the heart mm -hmm. and one of the poisons is not guarding the eyes. So what you look at um, of the haram, that that is a poison of the heart. Mm -hmm. When you look at the haram, it, it, it actually uh, affects your heart. Mm -hmm. Similarly, the, the, the other poison of the heart that they talk about is not restraining the tongue. Mm -hmm. that, on, that f on the one hand, actually just too much talking in general is, um, can affect the heart, mm -hmm. but specifically, uh, you know, not controlling the talking, not controlling the tongue, that mm -hmm. that becomes a cause of, of harming the heart, that, be that becomes a source of poison mm -hmm. for the heart. Mm -hmm. And it's important because you mentioned gossiping and backbiting, a slander, uh, etc., that those are kind of these obvious ways in which uh, we know that that we shouldn't, you know, those are like, we know that those are sins. Yeah. Or, you know, m most of us know we shouldn't be talking bad about people, we shouldn't be lying. Yeah. You know, that's clear. But I think what's less clear is just the idle talk. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? That we have a lot of idle talk too. Like, we just, we may not be backbiting or slandering, but we're just talking only dunya. Dunya, 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 right? Mm -hmm. um, we just talk about the latest fashion, or we talk about the, sc or the sports score, or we talk about the movies. And, yeah. and while, you know, it, it's not that it's necessarily haram, mm -hmm. but it's just empty. And the idea is... No substance. Is, no substance. Yeah. And the idea is all of that type of focus it, it gets us distracted, mm -hmm. you know, and, and, it, and, it, and it makes us lose sight of our, our bigger mission, our bigger purpose. My purpose on this earth isn't, you know, the fashion or to make money or to, you know... That's, that's all the dunya. That's all just distractions. Yeah. That's mm -hmm. just... Allah describes those things as uh, zina or... Um, this is the, the pleasures, the, the decoration of dunya, but this isn't the real thing. Okay. The real thing we're doing here is, 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 is knowing, loving, and worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so the, we have to also be careful when it comes to the tongue uh, that our talk is also not empty. You know, mm -hmm. it's not it's not all because if all of our talk is dunya, yeah. then we're just we get caught up mm -hmm. and we lose sight of our you know, our greater purpose. What makes a marriage last? Oh, wow. <laughs> Big question. Yeah, Big yeah. question. Alhamdulillah. And I had no idea about that then. I had no idea. When you apply for a program, it's all about self-promotion, isn't it?